everyone and welcome back to our Connect with Council. My name is Elizabeth. I'm with the San Diego County Bars Lawyer Referral Service. And um, today's topic is personal injury, a little bit more specific. Um, we have questions regarding um, just car accidents. Uh, we have a special attorney guest here today. Um, I'll let him introduce himself um, after Michelle and then we'll go into our first question. So Michelle. Hi everyone, welcome. Uh my name is Michelle Chavez and I am the Director of Public Services and one of my main focuses is the Lawyer Referral and Information Service. So we're excited today to have Mr. Blake Tastad here to talk about um, personal injury with a focus on auto accidents. So I'm gonna pass it on to you. Yeah, my name is Blake Tostad. I'm an attorney here at the Santos Law Center. We focus primarily on personal injury um, and within personal injury, it's a pretty broad category. Our real primary focus is car accidents. Um, the firm has been in business for about 40 years now. I've been an attorney for 12. Uh, the entirety of my uh, profession has been spent here. So I had a pretty good opportunity to learn a lot of the basics. I'm still learning. Um, there's always more that you can learn, but uh, at this point, we have a really good grasp and a really good system here at our firm. All right, so I'm going to just jump into the first question that most people ask is, what should I do or what would you suggest someone do if they were in an auto accident and they're injured? Okay, the first thing I would suggest is obviously common sense, get to a place that's safe. You don't want to uh, risk getting injured further or injuring somebody else. Um, the next step would be call the police. The police can be very helpful in gathering information um, that's beneficial to the claim. So the police can gather the uh, insurance information from the different parties. They can document the scene. Um, they'll have a lot of good information on the report. Um, sometimes that's not always possible. A lot of times I hear a client say, hey, I tried to call the police. Uh, they said they were busy. They said they couldn't come. Um, and so that kind of puts it into a different scenario. And if that's the scenario, then it's really important that the client kind of becomes um, almost, almost a detective. Uh, there's certain things that they need to gather. They need to look for if there's any witnesses to get the contact information for the witnesses. Uh, it's very beneficial um, for me if I'm able to see photos from the scene. Um, so where the cars came to rest, license plates, obviously you're gonna wanna get uh, contact information from the other driver. You're gonna want to also get uh, a picture of their registration. Registration card's helpful, also their insurance card. Okay. The insurance card's really beneficial. Um, once I have that basic information, I can get the claim up and running. Another piece of advice that I give, you know, a potential client or a friend, family, is if you have any symptoms, um, you know, even if it feels relatively minor at the moment, um, it's important to go seek medical treatment. Uh, it helps the claim a lot. If there's not a large delay in seeking treatment, um, it kind of substantiate the severity, the severity of the accident. So, um, you know, if the police come and you're injured, you know, request an ambulance, um, let them take you to the emergency room. If they don't come and there's no ambulance, I would suggest getting checked out at urgent care as soon as possible. Um, that's a good step. Uh, it's also important to contact an attorney um, relatively soon as soon as possible. Um, I would recommend to people that before they speak to their insurance or before they speak to other parties insurance to reach out to an attorney and let the attorney kind of take the lead on that because insurance companies, they're not in the business of paying you top dollar for your, for your pain and suffering, for your injury. Um, they're smart. You know, they have thousands of attorneys. They're billion dollar corporations. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, they're not looking to uh, to be your best friend and they're smart. So they're going to present, oh, you know, I'm so sorry to hear about your loss. We're going to make this right. Um, and sometimes they'll try to push quick settlements on people. I've seen that a lot. I had one case where 
the uh, insurance adjuster was saying, oh, you know, I think it's probably about $10,000 case. You know, I think I can get you $10,000. The claim ultimately settled for $5 million. Wow. So it's, you know, it makes a big difference having an attorney. Um, a lot of times the offer you're going to get is not the offer they're going to present to an attorney. And okay. it's typically lower level adjusters that are handling non-represented clients. So um, it's it's important. So I know we've talked in the past that it's important to seek medical treatment right away. Don't wait months down the line to be like, oh, I'm having spinal issues or whatever. Um, is that correct? That, I think we did discuss that because it it's not as beneficial. Yeah, the uh, insurance companies have a couple key plays in their playbook. Um, one of their favorites is delays in seeking treatment. And the, the thought process on their end goes, um, if somebody was really injured, then they would have sought treatment. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to present a claim and you're trying to present a high value claim at that, uh, it's difficult when there's been, you know, a two month gap um, from the date of the incident to the time when you first seek treatment. Um, okay. So yeah, I would, I would suggest going to the doctor, getting checked out, urgent care, you know, first 24 hours. Um, it's really important. The first 24, 48 hours after an accident, um, I kind of equate it to like a missing child, like those first 48 hours, like there's a lot of steps that need to be taken to make sure uh, the claim's set up right, to make sure um, everything's documented. So if you have an attorney, I can jump in quick. Um, at our firm, DeSantis Law Center, we're super responsive. When somebody calls, they're talking to an attorney and I'm able to kind of guide them. You know, these are the steps you should take. These are the steps you should avoid. And, um, okay. you know, it's even before you even retain us. So it's not like, oh, I need you to, um, you know, sign this document immediately. No, that's not how it is. I can give some basic advice. And ultimately, uh, I think it benefits clients or just anybody involved in a car accident substantially. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to skip over a couple questions because it relates to what we've been talking about. but. Um, We've heard through LRIS, you know, callers um, say that sometimes they've had the accident and they don't feel the symptoms right away. You've talked about the importance of going to see a doctor um, right away, but are there some injuries that won't show, um, you know, signs of of an injury, I guess, because they'll say, you know, oh, I had a car accident months ago, but um, my back is barely starting to have like a lot of like chronic pain. Um, yeah. So how how can an attorney help then or does it hurt your case? I mean. I don't think it's ideal to wait months. Um, I mean, I would, I would strongly recommend getting treatment, you know, as soon as you feel the need for it. Um, and if that happens to be a couple months later, then, uh, you know, sometimes that's how it works. Typically it'll present immediately to four days after that's that's often what i see somebody's in a car accident um you know people typically think of the usual su suspects the neck the back the whiplash but there are a lot of other injuries that might not present themselves or become clear the extent of them um for for a lot longer so there are some ways that you know we can counteract the uh the defense's position that this wasn't a severe accident, that it didn't cause injuries. Um, a lot of times people think that they are just having minor aches and pains. So I could show, okay, this person purchased a heating pad through Amazon the next day. This person has receipts for Tylenol from two days after. Um, this person um, subscribed for, uh, online, you know, physical therapy course. There are other little subtle, um, actions that people can take that can benefit their case. Uh, some injuries also just don't present themselves 
uh, inst- or right off the bat. Um, traumatic brain injury is one of those situations in which a lot of times it's not really diagnosed until, uh, you know, months later. So um, people think, you know, you necessarily or that you might necessarily need to have, um, you know, a giant laceration on your head. But a lot of times, you know, just the the momentum, the the change in the velocity that can cause the brain to to shift, and it's almost like it's bouncing back and forth. And even if it's not the person was unconscious, you can still have a concussion, and those concussions can have long lasting uh, ramifications that don't necessarily um, jump out right right at the time of the accident. Okay. Um, I have another question. Is there a statute of limitations for these types of cases? Yeah, the statute of limitations is, um, you know, it varies uh, depending on the entity that caused the accident. The standard time for a bodily injury claim, which is another individual, uh, is two years. So you have two years to reach a settlement or to file a lawsuit. Um, that changes if it's a, like a government entity, like for example, if somebody is rear-ended by, uh, a school bus, um, and the school bus is part of a school district, it will be government. And that time, the statute of limitations, um, there's a claim that you have to typically submit within six months. And then depending on how the, uh, the entity responds, um, there's correlating statutes, so that that's a little bit more technical. Yeah. But I, I would say that the average car accident um, is two years for a bodily injury claim. Okay. So don't wait six years and then call an attorney because yeah. 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 you may not have a case. Yeah. It may not yeah. be no. something they can help you with. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, one of my biggest pieces of advice is contact an attorney as quick as possible. I mean, it should be a uh, call you make before you reach out to any insurance companies. Um, okay. we'll, we'll help you. We'll help you every step of the way. Because a lot of times people are overwhelmed. You know, they just had a, a traumatic event. Uh, they're without a vehicle. Most people, it's their first time encountering a situation like that. It's nice to know that somebody who's done it a million times can step in and kind of offer some some guidance. Okay, great. Okay, so um, we've answered some of the questions, like you said, for example, like a um, traumatic brain injury could be one of the serious injuries that shows up later, which is one of our questions, mm-hmm. some of the serious but not so obvious um, injuries that can result from a car accident. But um, I'll move on to the next. Um, what if my case has no police report? I mean, it can still go forth, right? Or... Um, what happened yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, a uh, a police report is helpful because, like I said, it gathers a lot of the information. Um, without the police report, uh, it requires a little bit more diligence on the, uh, the client. So I'm hoping at that point that they've taken some pictures of the scene. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of cases are straightforward, right? If somebody, uh, you're stopped at a stop sign, stop light, and somebody comes barreling in behind and rear ends you, um, a lot of times it's not a big liability dispute. But when it's cases that involve people changing lanes, when it involves um, an intersection who had the the green light, who had the red light, those are situations where I typically see more dispute in regards to liability. So having the scene documented, having witnesses, it requires the client to be a little bit more proactive off the bat. Uh, the police, that's typically something they'll do if they're going to um, come to the scene. They'll gather that information. They'll give the client a piece of paper. It'll have an incident report number on it. And then with that incident report number, our office can get the traffic collision report for the client. We don't need the client to go down to the police station and get it. Um, but yeah, if that's not the situation that they don't come and, a lot of times they don't come. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of situations going on in San Diego. Um, we're a huge city at this point. 
uh, resources are limited. So it, it's not uncommon. I would say if, if you don't have a traffic collision report, don't worry about it. Okay. okay. I so, mean, it's like, it's, it's helpful, but it's not necessary. So you said to talk to an attorney before, well, if you're in an accident, talk to an attorney before you talk to the insurance agent. Is that even if you weren't injured or is it if you're injured or if your car's totaled or uh, what, is it all the time you can talk to an attorney or not all the time? I would say if it's super minor, like there's not a dent in your car, there's not really even a scratch at that point, you could probably handle it on your own. Okay. Um, if your car is totaled, it's indicative to me that there was a pretty large accident. Um, sure. And even if you don't feel injured at the time, like I said, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to let the adrenaline wear off. A lot of people, um, you know, they miss um, injuries because yeah. their adrenaline's, it's the fight or flight. Um, so you just kind of power through it. So if your car is total, definitely call an attorney. Okay. Um, if it's, if it's super minor and you give it a day or two and you're, you know, I feel fine. I think at that point, um, you know, an attorney might be less beneficial. So let me give you an example. I have a friend who's a terrible driver. She's always in car accidents, totaling her car and somebody else's. I'm sorry, but I do. And yeah. they've never contacted an attorney. Should she have? Is so the type of clients that we're ideally looking for are people who were injured in a car accident as the result of the negligence of somebody else. So yeah. we're looking for people who are rear-ended more than um, drivers who rear-ended somebody else. But okay. let's say the woman that she hit, she was injured and there, there was no attorneys involved. It's all insurance. Should that okay. woman have contacted an attorney because maybe she's not getting what she needs? Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. The person who was rear-ended, um, the person who was not at fault, uh, typically is going to get a better settlement. Um, oh, okay, okay, if, that's what I didn't understand because I know that somebody hit me in my brand new car, the door. And I just went through the insurance, their insurance. I never contacted an attorney that maybe I should have. Yeah. I mean, if it was a situation in which, you know, you had uh, any physical injury, you know, you wanted to get checked out. Um, it's something that an attorney can really help with because uh, not only are we going to do a better job, usually of presenting the claim to the insurance company. Uh, okay. We also have been working in the industry for so long that we know, uh, you know, who are the good chiropractors? Who are the good internal medicine doctors? Who are the good orthopedic surgeons? What's the best place to get uh, an MRI imaging? Um, so there's there's advantages to having an attorney who's familiar um, kind of with the local landscape. And, okay. you know, I was born in San Diego. I have preschool through law school in San Diego. Our firm has been San Diego. We don't have 12 firms across the nation. Uh, we're, we're San Diego. So this is where so, we devote all of our energy. Do you also help on the other side? You know, say it's the person that is liable and now they're being yeah. sued by the, you know, somebody. You handle no. that too, so that's somebody No, else. Okay. no, no, that's, that, that would be the defense side of it. And okay. when you when you buy auto insurance, what you're essentially buying, uh, there's there's a whole bundle of coverages that come with the typical auto insurance. But one of the protections that it provides uh, for an at-fault party is an attorney if needed. So a lot of times the insurance company will assign an adjuster. The adjuster will work to make sure the other person's property is um, taken care of. They'll try to reach a settlement with the other party uh, for their bodily injury. Um, a lot of time, most times it results in a settlement, but the times when it doesn't and it's a lawsuit filed at that point, your insurance company should assign an attorney to help defend okay. you in a lawsuit. Okay. So cool. that, that's typically taken care of through the insurance side. Okay. Um, and I guess we'll, we've answered a lot of our questions, but one last question, 
Um, as a potential client, what information should I have available before my first co consultation with you? Is there anything we you, you would like? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll try to make it as easy as possible also for clients. So if they have an appointment scheduled, um, you know, I can shoot them a list. And on okay. that list, you know, some things that jump to mind are, you know, pictures of the property damage. I always kind of like to see the severity of uh, of the collision. Um, I'm going to want to see the incident report number from the police. If the police provided an incident report so I could request the, uh, the full traffic collision report. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see the photos that they took of the other driver's driver's license and also their insurance policy. That helps me open up the claims. Uh, if the person went to the emergency room or urgent care, a lot of times they're sent home with discharge records or um, prescriptions for medications. Things like that are beneficial. It helps me uh, request the records. Uh, ultimately, at the after after treatments um, proceeded for a decent amount of time and I'm getting ready to submit a demand to insurance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather up all these records from all the different medical providers, and I will put them together in a demand packet. And ultimately, the adjuster is having access to these records. Uh, they need them to evaluate the claim. And um, mm -hmm. it, it, just, it just helps me put everything together okay. and kind of make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for this great info. Liz, yeah. you want to take us out? Yeah. So again, thank you so much for answering our questions. And yeah. for anyone out there who does need an attorney, you can always call the Lawyer Referral Service with the Bar Association. Um, Mr. Tastad is part of Lawyer Referral as well. So thank you for that. Um, thank you. We are open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And you can also now access a uh, referral online on the weekends when we're closed through our 24-7 platform. So, um, again, thank you so much, and I hope you have a good day. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.